Good afternoon, everyone. The annual meeting will start in about one minute. Good Wednesday afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the annual general membership meeting of Shared Capital Cooperative. I'm John Torres with NCBA CLUSA, and on behalf of our team, we're delighted to provide the technology and support for this year's virtual annual meeting. Shared Capital is a valued member of NCBA CLUSA, and we look forward to a time when we can all reconnect in person. Now, before we get started, here's some housekeeping items. Today's program will run for approximately 90 minutes. Attendees audio will be muted for the duration of the meeting. But if you have questions, please type them into the question box located in the control panel. We'll be monitoring the questions throughout the meeting and gonna do our best to get to as many of them as possible during the question and answer session that's later on in the program. This webinar is being recorded and a link to the recording will be shared in the coming weeks. Uh, so that's all I have for housekeeping. Uh, and now I'd like to turn things over to our friend and Shared Capital Cooperatives Executive Director, Christina Jennings. Christina. Hey, thanks, John. I really appreciate all the support you've given us and NCBA CLUSA has given us and uh, your sponsorship of the event um, from NCBA. So welcome everyone. We're thrilled to have our members um, and allies and friends joining us today for our 2020 annual member meeting. Uh, this is the first time we've done it virtually, and we've all been learning these processes. So um, I hope, hope that we can use this going forward as a way to keep members um, across the U.S. engaged with us, um, since typically our annual meeting is held right here in the Twin Cities, where I am. Um, but going, but uh, this, this time we get to share it with you virtually. So thanks so much for taking the time to be here. Um, Want to take a moment to... Um, also, just thank our sponsors. So we have, um, as we said, the National Cooperative Business Association, NCBA CLUSA, is our premier sponsor for this annual meeting, and we really appreciate their support. Um, also, the National Cooperative Bank is a premier sponsor of the event, um, and thank you so much to NCB. Uh, we, I'll list the other sponsors, um, Survey and Ballot Systems, the National Cooperative Grocers, Capital Impact Partners, Wegner CPAs, Organic Valley, Upside Down Consulting, the International Center for Cooperative Management, Triangle Park Creative, Mississippi Market Natural Foods Co-op, Neighboring Food Co-op Association, and board member Julie Ristow. Thank you all so much for your uh, support of this annual meeting, helping make it possible. We are thrilled to have our um, to have our board members in attendance and want to just uh, introduce our board quickly. Uh, we won't take the time to say their names because to just to make this a little more fluid, but I would like to introduce them and if, if board members would like to uh, join by video while we're uh, while we're introducing you, that'd be terrific. So folks can see who you are. We have this great picture of our board as well. Um, this is our board from 2019 through May of 2020. Um, so um, we have uh, on the board, uh, Thomas Beckett from Carolina Common Enterprises. Uh, he is the secretary of the board. Malia Connolly from, uh, from uh, and I've got the, uh, who is a co-op consultant. So I've got the wrong name on my sheet here. Malia, thank you for being here. <laughs> uh, and Dana Curtis from Key Figure Figures. Jacqueline Hanna from Food Co-op Initiative. Uh, we have Rapa McCaw from Nexus Community Partners, who unfortunately can't be with us this afternoon. Uh, Julie Ristow from Main Street Project. Holly Jo Sparks, 
uh, from Oriana Natural Foods, an MSU student housing cooperative, Jaime Villalaz from Latino Economic Development Center, and two outgoing uh, board members, Ann Reynolds, from, uh, who's a retired uh, from University of Wisconsin Center for Cooperatives, and Pamela Madzima from the Federation of Southern Cooperatives, as well as two oncoming uh, board members uh, who we will announce uh, in a few minutes. So I'll, I'll actually hold their intros a moment. So first we have, uh, we, the annual meetings always contain a lot of required, uh, required elements. So pardon us while we walk through some of them. One, we must provide proof of our meeting notice. We did uh, issue two meeting notices this year. Of course, the first one was sent on February 6, 2020. And the second one, for the revised meeting date was sent in, on June, uh, uh, June 25th of 2020. Um, and then I would like to share the board of directors uh, election results. So um, Holly Jo Sparks and Rapa Maka stood for re-election this year and we're thrilled to have them uh, coming back onto the board. Uh, they were introduced with a round of board members previously. I won't reintroduce them. And then we'd like to introduce our newest board members who are joining us, uh, Terrence Courtney, coming in from the, on the, uh, from the Federation of Southern Cooperatives. Welcome, Terrence. We're thrilled to have you on the board. And Camille Kerr with Upside Down Consulting, uh, in, and thrilled to have her coming on the board as well. Thank you so much for um, running. And thank you to all of the folks who ran for the board. Uh, we have been very proud to run competitive elections uh, for our board of directors since 2014. Uh, and that relies on our members uh, nominating and voting to, um, so that we have uh, excellent candidates to, to post. And so thank you all for doing that. Uh, we also wanna take a minute to really thank our outgoing board members, Pamela Madzima and Ann Reynolds, both served for two terms on our board um, and elected to step down because of other responsibilities. We really appreciate their um, or elected to not re run again. Um, so we thank them so much for their years of service, both contributed so much to the organization and we know they will stay involved in other ways. So thank you so much, Pamela and Anne. I wanna take a minute to go over, um, this is our chance to share with you, our members, friends and allies, uh, a little bit about what happened last year, what we did, what we accomplished. And so I wanna take a minute to run through um, through those and if uh, we can get, we'll put the slide up for the 2019 highlights. So of course our core activity is our lending. Uh, we made 17 loans uh, totaling $4.2 million last year to 16 different co-ops. So yeah, one co-op got two loans, um, uh, but those were 17 pretty time intensive loans and we love the opportunity to work uh, really closely with our borrowers to get them the financing they need. And so uh, we were really proud to be able to do that. 4.2 million was uh, relatively high, uh, high compared to, to some years um, and we can working to continue to grow our lending. So I hope that we'll um, be able to continue to get dollars into the hands of our co-op members that way. Last year, of course, was our big 40th anniversary. We turned 40 and um, we held celebrations regionally. We, uh, held a cel we held a celebration following our annual meeting in Minneapolis, St. Paul. And then we held a second uh, and third events, one in Baltimore as part of the Eastern Conference on Workplace Democracy. Uh, and I don't know if others are able to see the slide. I know that I'm not able to see the slide if others are. I uh, just wanna make sure that folks can see it. Um, but um, so, there were so there were two additional regional events held, uh, one in, at, in Baltimore in collaboration with the Eastern Conference on Workplace Democracy, and a second in Austin, Texas in collaboration with the NASCO Institute. Uh, we, we were pleased to be able to host events to bring our members and friends and folks from the co-op community together at those events to celebrate with us. And hopefully all of you picked up your, your uh, shared capital pint glass. Uh, if you haven't, let us know, we'll get you one. Last year was also a big year because we launched our new Accelerate Employee Ownership Program. This is a $5 million partnership with Project Equity, an a Oakland-based nonprofit. And that initiative is intended to really increase the quality of jobs through conversion of existing businesses 
two employee owned cooperatives. And so we managed to complete three conversions last year, as well as a lot of work on building that partnership and its systems. It's a 12 year uh, collaboration funded through the New World Foundation's Quality Jobs Fund. So we were excited to launch that. We also uh, were able to support a total of seven conversions to worker cooperatives last year. That's our biggest number ever and really shows the momentum behind the worker co-op conversion work um, and continued our work with housing, food, uh, other worker cooperatives um, and other types of cooperatives. We were also thrilled to receive a CDFI fund award last year for $565,000. And that was a grant award that goes to support our lending activities to cooperatives. And finally, we, we managed to uh, work with a lot of folks around the country to get um, some stories out about shared capital. Hopefully you saw some of them. We are featured in at least five articles um, in 2019. Thanks, thanks to those, uh, those folks we worked with to get, the, to get the word out about our work. Great, um, next slide then. And I remind you that there, uh, I think we may have said this at the top, but there will be time for question and answers at the um, at the end of the business meeting. So please think about what what you'd like to know more about, and we'll make time for you to ask those questions. Um, this is just a slide just to give you a sense of our lending last year in 2019. Um, over half of our lending was to worker cooperatives, um, and then we continued, as I said, our work with um, housing cooperatives. Uh, we worked with several federations of cooperatives um, and consumer co-ops, both food co-ops and other consumer co-ops, small producer co-ops, and, and some multi-stakeholder co-ops. So this would just give you a sense of our lending last year. This is a shift. Historically, about a third of our lending activities by number of loans have gone to worker, about a third to housing, and about a third to food, uh, with a smidgen going to other sectors. So this is um, showing a real significant increase in our worker co-op lending a lot of that's due to the um, both our new initiatives and also the demand um, that's out there right now. Next slide. And of course, you know, we want to take the time to share with you a little bit about our response to COVID. Of course, we um, the, the last uh, four months have been extremely unusual for all of us, um, and we knew when uh, things started that many of our co-ops were. Um, you know, we're experiencing a high level of anxiety as all business owners were, as all, all everyone was, about what this was gonna mean for their cooperatives. And so um, we tried to step forward very quickly to take, some, uh, to take some steps to support our borrowers and our members. So here are a few of the things we, we did. I mean, we, within, uh, within the first weeks of, uh, two weeks of the shelter uh, in place, uh, announcements for many states, um, as we were beginning to see uh, businesses uh, that businesses were going to need to shut down, we were able to um, just reach out to all of our borrowers and let them know that they could get an automatic 60-day deferment on payments, and we were able to extend those for another 90 days. So that automatic payment meant you didn't have to know where things were going, and you didn't um, have to provide a lot of documentation. You just needed to tell us that you needed needed that time. Um, we were able to do that with about 50% of our borrowers um, who, who decided to hold on to cash, make sure they were going to be able to weather the, the crisis. And so um, about 50% of our borrowers, as I said, took advantage of that. Um, and um, we then, we know that 60 to 90 days wasn't going to be enough for everyone. So then it was a matter of our staff working closely with the co-ops that we lend to and other co-ops to make sure that they uh, we could understand their needs. So with our borrowers figuring out if we needed to make further adjustments to their loans to support them. Uh, we also uh, very quickly made uh, emergency loans of up to $50,000 available. Um, and we, um, we, got, we got those rolling um, with board making a, a, a more uh, expedient and efficient approval process possible. Um, with a quick approval from the board, and uh, we were able to uh, you know, start rolling on decisions and try to get loans approved within three to five business days. Uh, we got those out weeks before the SBA launched their PPP or IDLE applications. Once the PPP and IDLE programs rolled out, we shifted our focus, still offering our $50,000 emergency loans, but shifted to also making sure that our borrowers and our members were able to access the PPP and the IDLE or other resources that they needed to, um, to address their, their situations. 
So uh, we were very proud to be able to roll that quickly. We also um, held and participated in numerous webinars to try and support cooperatives in thinking about cash flow and financial management during the crisis. And finally, we've been offering one-on-one -on -one assistance with uh, loan applications for PPP, for IDLE, or any other questions with financial management that was needed or, or retooling of, of the business. So pleased to have been able to work with our borrowers uh, closely. This is where uh, being, um, being a loan fund that is small enough to know our borrowers, is um, able to be f flexible, really comes in handy. And we, um, we, are, we are really pleased with how our borrowers, our members, our co-ops have really um, been able to step back and, and find solutions throughout this crisis. Thanks, next slide. So now I'd like to introduce our, um, our, our controller, uh, who is we contract with through key figures. Um, Andy Shively, so glad to have been working with you the last couple of years. Thanks so much for joining us today. Wanted to turn it over to you, if you would, to share some of your, uh, your insights about our, from our financial perspective, and then we'll have you stay on the line when we do the Q&A um, so that if folks have questions, they can address them to you as well. Sounds great. And thank you so much. I'm excited to have the opportunity to be here. Um, I hope in the future to be able to have the opportunity in person. But um, today I am excited to share just some high level highlights regarding the 2019 financials. Um, the full financials I do believe are available in your annual reports. We're just going to talk about a couple of very high level things um, today. Uh, overall, uh, 2019 shared capital's financial performance really reflects continued growth and stability. For the second year in a row, we saw significant asset growth with total assets increasing 8.5%, up more than a million dollars to reach $13.35 million at the end of the year. So it's continuing to make significant progress toward the goal of being a $20 million organization. In addition to total asset growth, um, the loan portfolio did uh, grow specifically uh, showing a net increase of about $510,000 or 4.9% to end the year at an $11 million uh, portfolio. So this reflects increased lending in general, including the first loan disbursements through the Accelerate Employee Ownership Fund that Christina had mentioned earlier. Um, the income statement for 2019 also uh, tells the story of increased growth and stability. Uh, following several years of difficulties propelled in particular by losses in the grocery sector, we've come out the other side seeing our first profitable year since 2015 uh, with a positive net income of nearly $32,000. And this is despite some loan losses um, that had occurred over the course of the year. Uh, we saw increases across all revenue categories over the prior year, um, up about 70%, uh, $740,000. Uh, grant revenues remained in strong in particular and earn revenues, um, revenues from lending were up by more than $200,000, about 30.6% increase in earned revenues. Um, you know, expenses remained far more level though, kind of ultimately leading to a profitable year for shared capital. Um, I will note that this profit was uh, unfortunately ins insufficient to provide for patronage dividends to be paid to borrowers, nor is it sufficient to declare dividends on preferred shares, but you know, we're on track to move that direction again in the future. Um, so just the slide, that, that was it on that slide. Next slide, please. Um, this slide does show some, some of the trends in increasing revenues and the increasing proportions of earned revenues. And then the next slide. Um, this is just showing the, kind of the increasing growth, the continued steady growth of the portfolio and the strength of the overall organization. Um, so I do believe those were the end of my comments, and I'll hand it back to Christina at this point, who's got some comments about 2020. Thanks, Andy. I really appreciate it. Um, it's been great working with Key Figures and with Andy there. Um, Key Figures, of course, is a worker co-op based in Austin, Texas, or and, and with uh, a really outstanding team of folks who've uh, been working with us since um, early 2019, um, if I've got my years right. Um, so the, I just want to touch on a couple of things uh, for 2020. Of course, there's a lot of uncertainty uh, for a lot of folks in 2020 that we um, overall are, are, do think we're on good track for the year. Um, so I want to highlight a couple of those things. Uh, one, we, as Andy mentioned, we are, have been on a, a, in a process to work to grow to a $20 million fund. Um, why $20 million? There are a number of reasons. $20 million is a level at which we can 
uh, operate with um, with a smaller percentage of grant subsidy, um, which is one of our goals. And um, also, it is a level which we could be making larger loans enough to really fill the gap that is often present for co-ops. So uh, increase our our loan sizes so that we can make sure to really fill uh, fill that gap while still making the small loans that we know are needed. Um, we are uh, projecting to lend about 4.7 million in 2020. Uh, that said, we do think that that could be impacted by the COVID situation for a variety of reasons, both folks slowing down plans because of their financial situations, but also we're also seeing a lot um, with folks having access, with co-ops having access to the PPP and idle programs, they may, for some of their operations, they may not need as much uh, as as much loan dollars. So we'll see how that goes. We're working actively to, um, you know, uh, make sure that the need for for capital is is met, and we'll continue to work with co-ops throughout the year um, on that. Um, we are really thrilled that we were able to start the year with all of our grant revenue for our budget in hand, and so that means we are um, actively raising grant revenue to make sure that we can start 2021. Uh, in a strong position, but are, um, feel assured that we can meet our needs that way. We um, also, we were uh, fortunate to be able to receive an SBA PPP loan of $100,000, and we're grateful for um, National Co-op Bank. We worked with NCB on the process. They did an outstanding and really responsive job um, in getting, uh, helping us and others get access to that financing. Um, and we're pleased to be able to send many of our members and other cooperatives to, um, to NCB to access that those loans. Um, we also um, have uh, are preparing for additional potential loan losses and looking at well, how that uh, what might be needed uh, because we know that co-ops and other and all businesses have been heavily impacted. That said, at this stage, we are not seeing significant additional problems. Um, we are uh, working really closely and so far um, our adjustments and ability to be flexible with our borrowers um, it has been it has been enough and we'll continue to monitor the situation closely uh, we expect to spend a lot of additional time this throughout the year with response um, to the covid situation for our borrowers and then of course our meeting was was rescheduled from its late may date because of the killing of george floyd in the twin cities and the um, the protests that erupted as a result of that throughout the country and really throughout the world um, we know that there's significant work that needs to be done that uh, that COVID brought to uh, to everyone's um, sharpened everyone's attention on around racial disparities, and then um, that the killing of George Floyd really brought the world's attention to another critical problem: the killing of black men by the police and and other um, issues of racism, systemic racism within our country. And so we know that attention is going to need to be focused on really helping rebuild communities. But rebuilding really with equity um, in in mind and and uh, really working um, even more diligently to find ways to build racial equity in our into our communities and into our cooperatives. Uh, so we expect all of those things to impact our 2020 year, but we are expecting to be able to uh, maintain our budget. We while we are expecting to come in a little bit behind on our our earned revenue because of um, changes in lending um, timing. We do think that we are able to, we've been holding our expenses um, down proportionally or even further in order to make sure that we can uh, we can be uh, poised for a, for a strong year. Um, and I, I would like to note that we um, are really pleased that we of course have been able to retain all of our staff that that has not impacted our, um, or created any need for us to lay off staff uh, that we're able to manage within our budget um, with our existing staff and keep uh, keep everyone in place. Um, so that is uh, kind of what we're expecting for 2020 and look forward to your questions while you're um, uh, preparing your questions, getting them into the chat, uh, the chat feature. Uh, feel free to ask me questions or Andy. Uh, we can bring on board members if they're the ones to answer the questions. Um, but I would like to take a minute to thank our staff. Um, you know, these are folks who do such hard work throughout the year. We've got an amazing team. And um, I do just want to take a minute to recognize them. Um, Jessica James is our loan administrator. She's on the far left in that picture. Um, Mark Fick, so this is in order from left to right. Um, Mark Fick is our senior loan officer. Um, and uh, Samantha Bailey, also a loan officer. Um, Adam Trott, our director of member relations. 
uh, me, executive director, and Rhonda Weidling, our operations manager. I also want to acknowledge, thanks Rhonda, and I want to acknowledge um, Andy Shively, of course, as a contract uh, controller, and Jim Shadko, a contract loan officer. Uh, so thanks so much for all of the work that uh, that team has done, and hopefully um, you all have had a chance to interact with them. Um, and a uh, small team, but a really um, passionate, committed, and, um, and incredibly talented individuals. So um, it's a thrill to work with them. Great. Um, at this point, uh, because of the virtual platform, um, I guess we, if, you, if there is any unfinished business or any new business, this would be the time to bring that forward. Um, if anyone has anything, I don't know if there's anything in the chat. Otherwise, we can move straight into questions and answers. Right, and I think, uh, let's see, I don't know if, if someone's going to read any questions or if I'm supposed to be managing chat. So folks, I just want to make sure that you are remembering that if you do have a question, you can add it to the question box inside your control question. panel. Uh, question the, box, not uh, chat. Not chat. Follow John's <laughs> instructions, not mine. Thank you. <laughs> you can see the chat as well, but we'd like you to put it inside the question portion there. There should be a drop down uh, for the question area. Type your question in there. We'll take a look. Um, and uh, I'm going to look through the chat right now, Christina, to see if there's anything that, that we may have missed there. That's great, since I'm giving folks the wrong instructions. Um, yeah, so put your questions in the question box. And if any, um, uh, while we're getting questions from the me from members and allies, if any of our board or, or, or staff have any burning questions you want to make sure folks know about, we could, uh, we could take those. If, please put them, plug them into the answer uh, box as well. And just a reminder while you're while you're doing that, um, that we um, the business portion is our first part. This is the required portion that we need to, do to for compliance. So that I appreciate your patience with the with some of the business components, but it's also our chance to introduce our board and our team and and uh, give you some highlights of our last year. So glad you could be with us. What we will be doing next is actually sharing some videos with you. So please plan to stick around after the Q and A. For the next half of the of this, uh, which is our cooperative forum, uh, we'll have about 45 minutes um, to hear from some of our cops via video and uh, hear what they're doing. I may have to make up questions. Is that is that the? That I can looks do that. like we've got we've got a few we've got a bunch of questions coming in now. Um, I'm not sure if you can see them, Christina. You should be able to. Um, I'm, I'm not to sure where. Make sure if you can. Should be in the question portion. You should have a question spin down. Okay. Uh, yeah, I can't. Uh, is there someone who can read them? Because I don't yeah, have. I can, I can, I can read them. Uh, so th this question is from uh, Stephen, and he's asking. He says that he sees in the notes that there is a half a million in preferred stock that can be redeemed under certain conditions in 2021. What are those conditions? Yeah, so that's great. So um, this is in our in our um, financial statements and our audit. Um, we do acknowledge that starting in 2021, so that we that there was a an impact investment group that made an investment back in. It's actually through a um, it's a program related investment through a foundation. They made a half a million dollar program uh, investment in our preferred shares. And uh, the agreement was that they would make that for a minimum of five years. Five years expires in 2021. So they may request it back uh, starting in 2021. They also can ask, and if they don't want to get it back, they can ask to convert it to uh, investment notes. Uh, investment notes are, are, um, are essentially loans to shared capital from members and non-members, uh, and they um, so they're an alternative, one of our one of our two investment opportunities is our preferred shares and the other is our investment notes. So they could convert it to our investment notes if they'd like. The investment notes carry fixed terms. Um, and so we, we at to, to date have not heard that they intend to redeem that uh, investment in 2021, but we will be working with them to explore it. We are, um, it is our understanding that they um, are 
uh, from prior conversations that they may uh, there may be likely to extend it to continue to hold it for a period of time, but we'll we'll keep you posted. Um, we are continuing to raise new uh, new investments through our preferred shares offering, and so fully expect that if they do a need to redeem it, that we may be we may well be in a position to uh, repay it at that time. The agreement does state that if we are not able to repay it because it would reduce our equity to asset ratio. Um, and sorry to get in the weeds, folks, but for those who who who, who follow these things, I will I will explain I'll explain that. Um, that because if we are unable to redeem it without um, reducing our equity to asset ratio below kind of required compliance levels, then we um, are not required to do it. We can we can uh, we can approach it in a different way with them. So there is some flexibility in it. Um, that's that's the explanation as best I can. Do. Hopefully that's clear. If you have further questions, I'd be more than happy to talk to anyone who'd like to get further in the weeds on that. Ha always happy to talk about uh, those investments. All right, we've got just uh, we've got a few more questions. Uh, another is uh, I see on uh, or I see in note 13 of the financial statement that approximately 1.3 million dollars of your cash balances were not FDIC insured. Do you have any plans for getting all funds insured? Yeah, we've assessed this with our auditors, and our auditors have not been concerned about having. So for the for folks who may not be familiar with it. Um, banks and credit unions have an um, FDIC or NCUA insurance up to certain levels um, of uh, 250,000, I believe is the standard level. Um, and um, so if we hold balances above that level, then we are not um, necessarily, those are the deposits above those levels may not be, in, uh, would not be insured. Um, we, uh, we have tried to have a diversification of where we hold money, but we also have tried to hold money in places that are um, socially and mission aligned. And um, so we hold funds at the National Cooperative Bank and at um, Sunrise Banks, which is a CDFI bank in Minneapolis, St. Paul. Um, and so we, we believe that um, we believe that our money is secure because of the history and performance of those banks. And um, even though we have deposits above the FDIC insurance levels, that said, uh, we always do monitor this and continue our conversations with the auditors to make sure that we are um, approaching that correctly, but general current wisdom has seems to be that that is not an, not an unsafe practice. Why that's double negative, but <laughs> that it is acceptable, but it must be noted in the audit. Thanks. All right, so we're going to move away from uh, financial questions uh, and we're going to go to uh, a question here that says, uh, how are you planning on assisting co-ops with equity work? Yeah, I mean, I think that there are a couple of ways. I mean, one is to make sure that we are prior that we continue to prioritize cooperative financing to cooperatives that um, are um, that are led and owned by people of color. That has been something that we have um, actively worked to do over a number of years, and we expect to continue that and and to continue to expand it. In addition, we are looking at some creative new new. Tools of uh, new tools and new dollars that could be used to expand that work further. Um, and then I think the other is really co connecting with our partners and our allies in communities to identify projects that we can support and maybe you know whether we need to think of new tools that can support um, support the work. So I think we're looking to uh, the cooperative community for their ideas. We're also looking to the uh, communities in which our cooperatives are, are, are working to understand what opportunities and what, uh, what needs, but also what opportunities there are. Um, so that's, that's broad, but I think that we, uh, we have dollars that we um, have available to continue to, to lend to um, cooperatives that are owned, organized, led by people of color. We're committed to doing that. We wanna expand that. And we want to make sure that we are um, that we're putting together the right array of financing options. We realize that debt financing is not always the best option for every cooperative at every stage. So continuing to look for ways to move capital that can be um, as flexible as possible and really help to build uh, building communities. I think we're also maintain that commitment to um, equity within our own organization, both at the staff and board level, and in how we um, in how we operate. So. Um, continue that work and looking for others who have um, creative solutions that, that they're looking for partners on. So looking forward to working with, with our members and, and the cooperative community. 
All right, we have a quick shout out from Nora Menken that says, thank you to SEC for our expedited relocation loan just before the world shut down. So thank you to SEC for that. Uh, one more question here says, uh, there has been an increase in funding to worker co-ops, which is awesome. Was there a reason for this? Yeah, I mean, there, were, there was. I mean, we've seen a lot, we've seen, one, we've seen a significant increase in the applications from worker co-ops. Um, and uh, that is both, I think, because of uh, because there are more folks starting worker co-ops, more folks at a stage where where debt financing can be helpful in their worker cooperatives. Um, but also, it was really a, a lot of that was also really driven by our work with conversions. So as we're working with more and more businesses that are selling to their employees and forming worker cooperatives. Um, that has driven um, not only more loans, but larger loans than we were typically giving to worker co-ops. Historically, our worker co-op uh, loans tended to be for working capital, small equipment purchases, relatively small dollar amounts. I think the average loan size for many of our worker co-op loans historically was about 50000 maybe $75,000. Um, now, with the worker co-op conversion work, we're making loans that are in anywhere between $100,000 and um, $650,000. And uh, so that obviously that also um, shifts the amount, the amount of our dollars going to worker cooperatives. But we do expect that trend to continue. We've already, uh, we've, we've uh, financed additional conversions this year. We have other conversions in the works and are working with both startup and expanding worker co-ops. Um, so don't expect that trend to, um, to stop uh, anytime soon, we hope. Right. We have a, another finance question. This is referencing note seven in the financials. Uh, and it's uh, referencing the line of credit from the National Cooperative Bank uh, that was not being utilized as of the end of 2019. Have you had to tap that line of credit in 2020? We have not had to tap the line of credit in 2020 so far. Our liquidity has, has remained strong in 2020. Um, we are extremely uh, grateful to have access to that line of credit. We use it to um, to manage the the uncertainties of really uh, of sort of timing of of our lending activities. That sometimes uh, we're 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 anticipating committed funds arriving, but dollars need to get out the door in a timely manner. And so that's been what we we don't use it as an operations um, for operations. We use it for our lending activities to really smooth the smooth the timing questions. Um, and are uh, been fortunate that our liquidity, our cash on hand. Has been strong throughout uh, 2020 and we have a number of commitments and quite a number of applications pending for additional dollars um, that that we'll be able to um, hopefully draw upon uh, from a variety of foundations impact investors and, and cooperatives to support um, further lending throughout the year but now, at this time we have not had to draw on ncb's funds um, but they've been a great partner in making that available to us all right, at this point, we have no new questions. And remember, just a quick reminder, if you do have a question, there's the chat or the, so I see, I said it too, Christina. <laughs> there's the question portion inside the control panel. Please use that. Uh, but as of this point right now, we don't have anything new. Terrific. And uh, we are planning to take, um, uh, I don't have the exact timing, we have a very brief break before the, um, before the, um, just a moment it's before is that right we've got a video that we'll play but we'll uh take a break between uh between uh, the question q a and our cooperative forum so if there are no more questions that come in we will uh we can just move into our cooperative forum and and start that process um and thank you all for the questions and if there for, if there are follow-up questions something you didn't get a chance to ask or that something else that comes up for you after uh the annual meeting feel free to contact uh probably the best place to contact is info at sharedcapital.coop so info at sharedcapital.coop and send your questions uh, and we will get them directed to the right person if you have other questions thanks perfect well maybe we can go ahead with the um the the video the pre um cooperative forum video is that the right next step ah Great, we've got, um, we have this, we have the giveaway opportunity. Sure, we can, we can talk about that. I think, um, Jacqueline, were you, I, I don't know if you were going to talk about this or me. I think, 
I, I'm happy to go ahead, but Jacqueline, jump on if you if you were planning to. Uh, Christina, I was going to let you because I do okay. not know all the details. <laughs> okay, terrific, no problem. Well, we're we're excited to be able to offer a giveaway. We um, we've really valued our membership. We're a member of the National Co-op Business Association, and we've uh, valued our membership in NCBA Clusa for the work that NCBA does. Uh, the NCBA Clusa does domestically as well as internationally, and. Um, we um, worked, we partnered with NCBA to offer a one year membership. Thanks so much for their, um, for, for them making this available. Uh, it's a one year membership for any co-op uh, who would like to join NCBA. Uh, one year is the chance for you, who, it's one of you who's not currently a member or maybe you thought you couldn't renew because of COVID and now you would be able to become a member, re retain your membership. All you have to do to enter is email adam at sharedcapital.coop um, and in 250 words or less, tell us uh, something about how intercooperation and cooperative capital are important. Use the subject line NCBA membership giveaway uh, and we will enter you into that drawing and we will notify, um, our, we'll notify you by email if you've won it. So, and if you'd like to become an NCBA member, here's your chance for a one year free email adam at sharedcapital.coop. Tell them about inter your inter how intercooperation and, and cooperative capital are important and use the subject line NCBA membership giveaway. Uh, it's on your screen. Uh, feel free to um, enter a question uh, if you have any questions about it um, otherwise. Uh, look forward to getting your um, submissions so we can make it, we'll be drawing. Um, Adam, what is the deadline? Uh, we were trying to have that ready um, by, we want to announce in August. So please okay. get your entries in this month. Okay, get your entries in this month. You got a little bit of time and then we'll get your um, your new membership out. Thanks so much again to NCBA Clusa. Terrific. Um, then it is time for us. Um, oh, thanks, Adam. The, the added slide. We are thrilled that our 2019 annual report is available um, by web. It will be being mailed out to all members as well. Um, and so please, uh, you can use this link, uh, sharedcapital.coop slash 2019 hyphen shared hyphen capital hyphen annual hyphen report. So sharedcapital.coop to a 2019 annual report. This gives you uh, some of the highlights you heard today, but a lot more, as well as some great stories about the co-ops that we uh, provided financing to uh, last year to give you a chance to know more about that work. Also has a summarized version of our annual, of our, excuse me, our uh, audited financial statements. So please pick up uh, your electronic copy from our website or um, watch for one in the mail. Uh, if you are not already a member, uh, you can contact us and we can get you a printed copy if you'd like. Terrific. Then should I turn it over to uh, the, uh, we're taking a momentary break. Is that correct, Adam or John? Yeah, we were just going to take one, one minute break and then we'll okay. launch into the forum. We'll be here. If folks want to take a moment break. Uh, we'll uh, reconvene in a minute, and then um, we'll, we'll share. The, we'll be sharing some stories from our co-op members about the great work that they're doing. Thanks. That is a one minute break if anyone uh, if anyone needs to know.
Great, I think we are ready to reconvene. And let me just get, uh, I think we, we have a short video um, from the National Cooperative Business Association. Thanks, John, can I uh, let me know when you're ready? I'll turn it over to you. Hi, Christina. I did not know we were having that video. Um, I wow. like <laughs> to do an NCB video. <laughs> Well, you know, I think we could work around it. We can, yes, we can jump so. straight I, into I, it. I do, want to say, I do want to say thank you so much. We are, we are so pleased to partner with Shared Capital. Um, and uh, having a membership at NCBA Clusa is, uh, is a great opportunity to meet so many different people from so many different sectors and to work, uh, to work with those folks. Uh, and so thank you again, Christina, for your great partnership. And we look forward uh, to whoever, uh, whoever is able to uh, become members of NCBA Clusa. Excellent. That was a live right. video. That was a live video. <laughs> that was perfect. Perfect. Thanks so much, John. Sure, I appreciate it. We can all ad lib here, right? That was perfect. Um, terrific. So I'm going to invite on Jacqueline Hanna, one of our one of our board members, um, and also uh, Jacqueline is with the uh, the Food Co-op Initiative, um, and and she has been a terrific board member for us, just bringing great insights about work in the food co-op sector. But she's also been an outstanding chair of our marketing and outreach committee. Thanks, Jacqueline, for all the work you do with us. Um, I'd, I'd like to turn it over to you to uh, introduce our cooperative forum. Excellent. I'm very excited to be with you all today to get to introduce this. Uh, the cooperative forum is an opportunity for us to highlight what you've been doing as member cooperatives. And just to be clear for everyone, and sometimes I wasn't always clear when my food co-op, food co-op, uh, Common Ground Food Co-op in Urbana, Illinois, when I was the jam there, that everyone, everything that makes what we do possible at Shared Capital is that we are a co-op of co-ops. So we're a bunch of different co-ops working together to build this. And so we are shared, we are shared capital. And the work that you're doing out there that we hopefully are supporting and helping to make possible that we are kind of collectively as a cooperative community doing that work. And there's been some incredible work, um, co cooperative work happening uh, this spring and summer. And the response from cooperatives has been immediate. It has been creative, it has been innovative, it has been direct and to the people who have needed it most and has shown the strength of the cooperative model, which we really believe, and we'll talk about that later, is only gonna grow from here as people try and respond to this moment. Um, so we are going to feature some exciting videos that have been created by our members about the work that they've done this spring and summer to creatively address this moment in so many different ways. And we know a ton of you have done work that we wish we could have featured um, we didn't want to keep everyone here all day, so we had to pick and choose, um, but we hope this is a good representation of all the different things that are happening out there. And if there's more that your co-ops did this spring and summer to innovate, to support your community, to help to respond to difficulties, we'd love to hear about it. Please do email us that. Uh, Adam, do throw your email in the, in the, in the chat or the comment box. Uh, Adam would specifically from our team love to hear more about that. We'd love to share your stories in additional ways. But right now, we're going to hear about uh, some work done by the Cooperative Home Care Associates, Oxbow Design Build Co-op, the Union Cab of Madison Cooperative, uh, Green Top Grocery, and Federation of Southern Cooperatives. So we're gonna get with that, we're gonna get started with our video presentations and you're really gonna enjoy this. They're short, they're sweet, and they're very inspiring. Take it away, John. Are you ready? <laughs> was that too fast? No, that was really good. Um, it's, it says it's playing, but I don't see it. So nope. give me one sec. Okay. Here, we'll switch things up here. There we go. Okay. Hi, everyone. My name is Audrey Powell, and I'm the president and CEO of Cooperative Home Care Associates, located in the Bronx, New York, COVID-19 epicenter. We are the largest worker-owned cooperative in the United States, and our workforce provides essential personal care services to the frail elderly, people with living with disabilities, and those with chronic conditions, allowing these folks to remain in their homes and communities as opposed to being institutionalized. Prior to this pandemic, we were an invisible workforce because our work is done within the, home, the client's home. When COVID-19 descended upon our country, we remained invisible and not seen as a workforce in need of personal protective equipment. 
I immediately knew that we were in for a challenge securing the most basic PPE to safeguard our workforce. Thinking about our co-op network, in mid-March, I reached out to Molly Hemstreet, founder of Opportunity Threads, which is a cut and sew manufacturing co-op located in North Carolina. I asked Molly about their ability to produce masks for CHCA home care workers, and to my great delight, they were already exploring pivoting to making PPE and we're working as part of a broader coalition of manufacturers to address the COVID crisis. One week later, they shipped us our first 500 reusable masks to protect our essential workforce. We continue to work with the coalition not only to secure masks, but face shields and gowns, and it has been an amazing collaboration that's protecting our workforce, as well as protecting jobs in, co in the co-op sector in New York and North Carolina. It is also an incredible expression of principle six, cooperation amongst cooperatives. It is so gratifying to be working with a trusted partner, especially at this time when there's so many schemes that are arising out of the desperate need for PPE. Always in solidarity, stay safe and take care. Hope all is well. Hi, I'm Julia. I'm a representative of Union Cab of Madison Cooperative. Since the beginning of the community spread of coronavirus in Dane County, cooperative businesses have had to quickly adjust to stay afloat. With revenue down and limited staffing, maintaining through the crisis has been a big challenge for everyone. We at Union Cab have been very grateful for the strong cooperative community that we have here in Madison. The spirit of this community allows us to pool resources and to help lift each other up. Central to the founding values of Union Cab is the tenet which reads, cooperatives are based on the values of self-help, self-responsibility, democracy, equality, equity, and solidarity. Our ethical values include honesty, openness, social responsibility, and caring for others. An example of how Union has tried to operate in accordance with these values is our partnership with Willie Street Co-op. Very soon after the Safer at Home order was decreed, it was clear that there was a need in our community to safely ensure food security. We have worked together to help each other as cooperatives with Union Aiding Willie Street and food deliveries to the community. We're very proud of the work that we have with our cooperative partners and very proud of the cooperative community we are a part of. Thank you. Hi, my name is Kristen Barker and I'm with Co-op Cincy and I just want to say thank you so much National Cooperative Bank and all the people that have made it possible for us to receive um, a payroll protection program loan. Um, not only have you helped us, but you've helped two members of our co-op network, our harvest and sustain energy and this is truly a lifeline for all of us. So I really, really want to thank you for all the extra time you put in, those super late hours, um, the weekend work, everything. Uh, it's making a huge difference for us. So thank you very, very much. Here at our harvest, and we just wanted to thank you so very much for all your help. Um, Stephen, do you have anything? Yeah, especially during this COVID-19 time where you know, the economy and everything is all hectic and crazy. And, you know, you guys are probably going nuts with you know, busyness. Uh, but thank you for getting everything together for us so quickly. Um, we're so grateful that we can keep going and keep producing food for the, you know, our local community and keep people satisfied and healthy. So I appreciate the work. Thank you, NCB. You rock! We appreciate you so much, especially Renee Ledoux. Thank you. Hi, 
Hi, I'm Rich Berenson, Midwest Association of Housing Cooperatives. I'm president of the association. Uh, we recently worked with you for a PPP program to help keep our employees working and functioning and was very concerned to get it in time and get it processed and handled so we could keep them working. Um, I was so happy with all the work you guys did. I always try to go to an NCB bank because of all the great work you do. And I just want to say thank you on behalf of me and my employees. Hi, this is Annie Gonzalez, Vice President and Human Resources for RCP Management. I want to personally extend a huge thank you to NCB for helping RCP through this most challenging of challenging times. NCB has directly positively impacted over 50 families here at RCP. And from my family to yours, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Be safe and be well. can't hear you. That would be good if I unmuted myself. <laughs> <laughs> so Jackie, I was wondering if you could come back on and just uh, intro uh, uh -huh. the Green Top Grocers. Absolutely. So I get the honor again. I really get to play today of introducing a video from Green Top Grocery. This is a startup food co-op in Bloomington, Illinois that opened just three years ago. Uh, food co-op initiative, the organization I work with, helps startups food co-ops get open and we got to work extensively with them and Shared Capital was a critical financial partner in getting this store open and it wasn't a great success at first actually and they needed time and patience and with the support of Shared Capital and other lenders they've been able to get on their feet to do something pretty incredible actually and this video i think takes a chance to highlight that uh i was told to tell you about uh there's a video series that i'm heading up uh called food co-ops now it's a small video series a uh, video is about six to twelve minutes long featuring some of the incredible work that food co-ops do and how they make a difference in many different ways, both startup food co-ops that don't have stores yet and those that do throughout the country. And so we first featured the story from Green Top Grocery um, and I'm biased. This is only an hour away from my home co-op and I've been very involved with them all along, um, but uh, we featured their work in, during COVID-19. And what you're gonna see here is an example of what food co-ops were able to do all over the country during that time, both how they were able to keep people fed when the big chains couldn't because of something unique about our model and also how we were able to take that moment to pivot and support farmers and producers who otherwise would have lost livelihoods or had to lay staff off in that moment to make a powerful difference in their lives. So uh, I think hopefully I've talked long enough <laughs> that I was giving him a transition moment. Uh, this is Green Top Grocery. Hello you all, I'm Jacqueline Hanna and I serve on the board of directors of Shared Capital. But important today to know about me is that I'm an owner of Green Top Grocery, a cooperatively owned grocery store in Bloomington, Illinois, who has been a member of Shared Capital since 2016 and a borrower, and in 2017 opened its doors to its community. Well, Green Top, like all grocery stores during the COVID-19 crisis, really felt the heat as people panicked and bought more and more groceries. Actually, the chains in their community were pretty much stripped out of eggs, milk, bread, those basics that everyone needs. And Green Top still had them for a while, but eventually they felt the heat too. But they have a different supply chain. They have deep relationships with local farms. And so their buyers reached out to farms like Prairie Earth Farms, Antiquity Oak Farms, and many others. They work with over 75 in their community and had people driving in truckloads of eggs, milk, potatoes, carrots, you name it, those basic staples that were needed by the community hour after hour and keeping their shelves filled while their sales tripled to meet the community's need. But even better, Green Top innovated. There was one of their farms, a dairy farm, that was in the opposite situation. Um, instead of being that they were there helping Green Top, they needed help. They had all of their orders for cafes and restaurants be canceled for milk, and they had a glut. Green Top jumped into action, advertised a buy one, get one free sale of local milk, even did billboards, and then opened their doors. And they sold a truckload of that milk and were able to move vast amounts of it for that farmer, helping them out and preventing that food from being wasted. 
wasted. It's just a little bit of what food co-ops can make possible. And share capital was a huge piece of that because Green Tech Grocery did go through economic crisis in 2018, but because share capital believed in their project, understood co-ops and helped them refinance that debt, they were here to make this possible today and serve their community. I believe we have one more video that we are awaiting. Is that correct? I think I think that two. Is two. Two. Two, two more. Yeah, two more. Awesome. Okay, here we go. I think there's no sound. We may need to adjust sound and restart. The first big. I'm going to bring that up. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> for design build cooperative. We're a group of architects, general contractors, and fabricators. We've been working in East Hampton since 2015. We're a full service design, construction, and fabrication company that works on residential and commercial properties and fabricates things like speakers and furniture. We had been listening to the news and were aware of the looming coronavirus crisis, wondering how it would play out. We felt really nervous about what it could mean for us personally, our business, and our community. The first big news came on March 23rd when Governor Baker issued an emergency order requiring all businesses and organizations that do not provide COVID-19 essential services to close their physical workplaces and facilities to workers, customers, and the public as of March 24th. Everything shut down and we couldn't continue doing the work that we usually do, but we knew that we needed to contribute somehow. It became clear pretty quickly that there was an immense and urgent need for personal protective equipment and that essential employees were being asked to work without having what they needed to stay safe. So we got our co-op board together remotely on April 1st and began looking for our role in the efforts. Since we're small, our production systems are flexible and our cooperative structure has allowed us to pivot quickly and direct our attention towards goals that we share. We were inspired by the immediate response of designers and engineers providing open source schematics for face shields and masks. And we decided to adapt a design to work with our production abilities. One of the issues though, was the availability of materials. We ran into a great deal of difficulty finding what could work and we had to constantly adapt our design and production strategies to what was available, which was changing all the time. We reached out to our local cooperative network with this idea and immediately found support. Collective Copies and Amherst supplied us with enough plastic film, which they usually use for album covers, so that we could perfect our prototype and produce several hundred shields right away. From there, we were able to raise money to secure larger quantities of materials and have since produced and donated close to 2,000 face shields to Cooley Dickinson Hospital, Valley Medical Group, the Holyoke Soldiers Home, VinFen, and the Food Bank of Western Massachusetts, among others. We're continuing to raise funds so that we can produce 8,000 more face shields to give to workers who need them. We were capable of donating the shields because we were able to work with some of our lenders, including Shared Capital, itself a co-op, who offered us forbearance until we could get back to our usual work. These are frightening times, and it's easy to feel like you're stuck in a stultifying haze, and whatever you do won't be enough. But times like these reinforce a lesson at the core of the cooperative mission. We are stronger and our communities are healthier when we work together. When we work together, we can confront crises and do so quickly. And when we work together, we can feel closer to our community, even when we have to be apart. Please consider donating. And thank you so much to those of you who already have.
Hey, we've got one more video here. Hopefully you've all been very inspired and here we go. Hello, I'm Cornelius Blanding with the Federation of Southern Cooperatives Land Assistance Fund. The Federation is a cooperative association of black farmers, landowners and cooperatives all around the South. Um, we've been at this work for 53 years now and we've been severely impacted like most in this country, like all in this country and around the world by the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, it has affected our staff our membership and our organization overall. As a staff, we're adjusting by working remotely and using a lot of remote-based systems. Uh, we're serving our membership primarily by phone, uh, but they've been severely impacted. We've had black farmers and co-ops who reported uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of 75 to 80% losses of their markets. The broccoli and collars. We're responding by doing, providing assessments of our members and finding out how they've truly been impacted and connecting them with available resources accordingly. But we've also responded by aggregating a lot of our produce, a lot of our membership as part of our regional marketing system and supplying produce to communities who've been severely impacted disproportionately and providing them with food boxes through the USDA food box program. Again, this uh, pandemic uh, has shed a light. It's shed a light on the inequalities in this country. It has shed a light on many of the unjust and unsustainable systems, especially the food system. But we must all realize that we're in this together. And the only way we come out of it is we come out of it cooperatively. Christina, you're muted, I think. You know, I hit unmute and then it, and then I hit mute again. Um, so here I am back. <laughs> Let me try that again. Thanks, Jacqueline, so much for taking the time to introduce those videos. Um, I want to just take a moment to, to just say a couple of words about them as well. Um, we, we're really thrilled that our members took the time when I know folks are extremely busy right now, but took the time to put together videos that showcase some of the really important um, ways uh, that, that co-ops are supporting their communities and each other. So um, I just wanna say a word or two about some of the folks who are featured. Um, you know, of course the National Co-op Bank um, is, is actually a member of Shared Capital, became a member a few years ago. Uh, we appreciate the membership as well as, uh, of course, we pr they provide banking services and a lot of credit to us. Um, Cooperative Home Care Associates became a, a member in 20, in 2019, and when we provided a working capital line of, or excuse me, a working capital loan to support them when they were facing some um, major shifts in their in in how their reimbursements were coming from the state, and we were thrilled to be able to work with them given their long history of great work as a home care co-op um, in the Bronx. Um, Oxbow Design Build uh, was part of a conversion converted to a worker cooperative in 2019, and we were able to provide financing for that conversion so their employees could buy the business. Um, Union Cab has been a longstanding member out of Madison, Wisconsin, and actually has been, um, has been an investor for a number of years with us, and we greatly value that, um, that investment that helps us do more uh, co-op lending. And uh, Green Top Grocery, as Jacqueline covered, is a startup co-op that we've provided financing to back a number of years ago, and we continue to work with. Uh, and of course, the Federation of Southern Cooperatives uh, has been a member for a number of years, and uh, they have done, they uh, do great work, of course, in uh, the Southeast region of the U.S., and we're thrilled to be able to partner with them. Uh, and the ways that we've done that is actually being able to move a line of credit for them uh, as, a, as an organization funded by, uh, with a lot of USDA and other federal money. Um, reimbursement timeframes and time horizons can be extremely long. And so 
uh, their leadership approached uh, shared capital to uh, explore a line of credit a number of years ago, back in 2016. I think it was among the fastest loans we were able ever ever made working with them um, to address um, to address that that just those reimbursement challenges. And so we've continued to work with them and to build a line of credit that really can serve their their needs and are thrilled to be partners uh, in that work and and to continue to look for new ways that we can uh, that we can do that. Um, so just wanted to highlight uh, some of those uh, those ways. Of course, we have so many great members, and I'm always really inspired by the stories. Um, and that's why I, I always uh, think that the Cooperative Forum, my favorite part is being able to highlight the work our members are doing. Uh, that's what makes shared capital as a co-op of co-ops. Uh, that's what makes us our work um, unique and different uh, as a uh, member-owned fund, but also um, a fund that is really devoted to supporting, giving ownership to the co-ops that are borrowers. Um, that is an, uh, you know, an important model uh, that, uh, and as an unregulated financial institution, so not as a bank or credit union, we're able to do the kind of financing that sometimes the banks and credit unions can't do and fill a gap that otherwise exists for co-ops. I'm sure many of you have heard, heard us all tell uh, the story of how we were founded, but back in, in 1979, a small group of co-ops came together basically because they couldn't access bank financing. Uh, they found that their needs were not being met by, by banks. And so they pooled a small amount of money to create a fund that would be owned by, the, by its members and ensure that capital was available. And we're really proud to continue that mission um, today after 40 uh, some years. Um, and I wanna just take a, a moment to talk a little bit about um, how, how things go forward, right? The, uh, we're in 2020, uh, starting our new decade, but at a time that is incredibly difficult for, for, for our members, for their communities, for their families. And I think we're thinking about the role of cooperatives. We believe that cooperatives are a critical piece, a critical solution to move forward. And we want to find um, new ways to support co-ops in, in those efforts. The COVID crisis, has revealed so many issues in our communities, deep seated disparities, real problems with supply chains um, and, and fundamental uh, insecurity for businesses, for small businesses. And we know that, the co that cooperatives can be a critical piece of, a critical part of solutions to addressing those issues. Uh, we are looking for ways also to make sure that we are part of the commitment, the renewed, uh, and in critically important commitment to racial equity and racial justice. Uh, we know that, uh, that from the protests that have happened that there is a really uh, inc incredible opportunity in this crisis to look to come together and find meaningful ways to change uh, our communities, change our systems, change our policies. And we are, eager to work together with our members, with the communities in which they are located, with the uh, people on the ground to find ways to support those efforts to make lasting change. Uh, we know that our members are doing great work. We wanna hear from you and wanna know how we can support you. So please reach out, tell us if you need something, whether you're a borrower, a member, another co-op, a partner helping co-ops, uh, we look forward to working with you throughout the next year to find, um, to bring, meaningful and positive change. Thank you all for being here. Thanks for being a part of Shared Capital and uh, let us know if we can be of any service. Great, and I think, I think we are wrapped up unless there are questions that are coming in. We, we, we do have a few minutes if there are, but I think if there aren't, we can let it go. We can wrap and let folks have the rest of their day. Thank you so much for being here. Any, anything we need, to, any closing things we need to address? Terrific. I'm going to take that as a no and we can uh, we'll wrap up. Thanks again.